WST Podcast. I'm Kay Wynn. Big Ben couldn't join us today. He's flying back to Seattle, but we have a very special guest. It's holiday t- season. It's Christmas time. Happy holidays for our listeners out there. And Akeem holiday. from Raw and Uncut Podcast. Welcome to the show. Hey, man. Appreciate it, man. I know we've been trying to connect for a while, man. I, I really appreciate it, man. Uh, you know, thank thank you for letting me on the show, man. I really enjoy your show a lot. No, thanks for coming. And the feeling is likewise. We love watching you and talking to people. And I think we run in the same circle of podcasters. And yeah. I'll take a page out of your book where you don't intro introduce a grown man. Yeah. So <laughs> nah, nah, I don't. So um uh, my name is uh I Kim. I'm from the Rona Cup podcast and um, you know, I pretty much my podcast is pretty much shoot the breeze, talk about whatever I feel like, you know what I mean? It's just all about um, you know, you know, talking to the public and you know, just enjoying life, man. So I I, I really enjoy myself and I love to be a part of the podcasting world and I'm just happy to be here, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, I mean you're covering relationships, you're covering sports, you're covering urban trends. You you got it all figured out. Uh yeah. I- I'm kind of arrowed down a little bit, but man, I'm feeling good. Man, I like to, I like to talk about what I want to talk about, and you know, hear emails from people that you know hate me or love me, or you know, it's all gravy, man. I love it. Yeah, well, so this collaboration is possible thanks to a long list of podcasters, starting with Delvin Cox, <laughs> and then we did a show with him. He introduced us yeah. to Baylor the Great, and then we got connected to Just Blaze. And then somehow we got connected to D Murph and we just did a podcast with D Murph um, from Houston and why not sports earlier this week. And then we got connected to you. So how did you get involved with these guys? Hey man, you know, (laughs) I I, I don't even know, but (laughs) let me tell you, it started with Cox though, because um, when I first got in the game, I was kind of introduced to his podcast before I started. So I was listening to him. And then, um, um, and then I and then I got with Just Blaze. Um, you know, I was always listening to those two before, uh, and then I listened to Rory um, at the Mitchell Report Unleashed uh, podcast, and then they just start introducing me to other podcasters, uh, uh, and them guys. That's why when you mentioned them guys, like we 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 circle each other's mm-hmm. uh, podcast a lot, man, and. Man, then we just started getting to rolling. Uh, them guys helped me a lot, um, you know, just to get started, man, and, you know, gave me a lot of tips, and I'm thankful for them guys, man. Them some great guys right there. Yeah, no, Delvin, I didn't know, like, who's who in the zoo. We didn't know how to record and upload, and Delvin gave me some tricks of the trade and then introduced to some people, and, you know, it's kind of like basketball. You play against people, you become fans of people, and mm-hmm. you have them on your show, and you, you stay in touch, and it's just adding to the podcast community. Yeah, man. He he is an absolute beast, man. I, I enjoy his show. Every week he has like different style of people on there. So it's like what I'm getting. And, you know, I kind of like that, man. I kind of like that he's random and um, he's just great. Just Blaze is by far the best basketball, mm-hmm. solely basketball podcast I've ever heard. So um, what he got going is is special. Yeah, he goes deep and he's knowledgeable like on a lot of teams, a lot of benches. I was like, oh, I didn't even know dude was on that team. <laughs> oh, he, if you name a player, he knows exactly where they're at. Yeah. And their stats. <laughs> he's unbelievable. Yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah. Well, let's take it back to the Bay. So you live in SAC now. Mm-hmm. You grew up in San Francisco. I grew up in the East Bay. So my first question is, is who was the best? high school football player that you played against when you were growing up? Mm. I had no respect for a lot of people, but I, I, I would tell you now it was just, it was just one. Um, he, he was, he was pretty good. I don't, I think he went to SC. Okay. Um, his name is Antoine Simmons. Um, he was really, really, really good. Like uh, he played corner. Uh, same time I did, you know, I was a safety um, at that time. So um, we really didn't compete, but play offensive. So sometimes he'd play wide receiver. Mm-hmm. So I had the covering, but man, he was a special player back then. Um, I know he went to SC. So 
he was really good. Antoine Simmons. All right. And so who's the player when you were growing up that you maybe didn't play against, but you saw them, whether it was basketball, baseball, or football in the Bay? Um, well, I, I saw Gary Payton all the time. Um, I saw Gary Payton literally all the time. Um, I got, you know, there's so many Bay Area, <laughs> Bay Area guys, but Bill Cartwright, too, when I was younger, Bill Cartwright frequent the Bay a lot. Um, I don't have no idea why. I think he's from Sacramento, though, but. Yeah, he's, he's from Elk Grove. Yeah, yeah. He, he's. He, he used to come to the Bay to um, the Boys and Girls Club where I was at all the time. Um, he was he had the ugliest jumper ever. I'll never forget him. But <laughs> that, that wind up, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, hey, it was money though. Yeah, but he, you know, but he, you know, he came around. Um, John Taylor, um, but he he's not from the Bay. But I remember him playing for the Niners, and he's always frequent the Bay Area a lot. Man, he's come talk to us all the time, man, and go to his camps. It was a special time, man, back then. Yeah, so unfortunately, I didn't get to see Gary play when he was in high school. So for oh, me, it was Jason Kidd. Oh, Kidd and too. Kidd and Gerald Walker. Like, a lot of people don't know about Gerald Walker, like, mm-hmm. outside of the Bay. But he was nice. He was, he was small, nice. but he could jump. He was electrifying. Yeah. And yeah. you knew Jason would be the better pro. He had the But yeah. Gerald was unbelievable. <laughs> he was a beast. Isaiah. Isaiah Ryder, too. He was Isaiah really Ryder as well. Yeah, he was good. Yeah. yeah. Darnell Robinson from Emory, too. Oh. <laughs> yeah. he, uh, I think he had yeah. the state for points for a while. Um, yeah. So I played in basketball. We played in the Reardon Classic. Mm-hmm. And I thought we were going to play them, but our team lost, and they won, of course. But mm-hmm. we sat and watched them play, and it was a man among boys. <laughs> there was That's no stopping them. That's pretty dope, man. The city – the city's underrated for athletes. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll tell you that, man. They're they're really underrated for athletes. So people don't know too. Like, um, he's not from the Bay, but Bill Russell's Bill Russell was born in Louisiana, but he moved to the Bay when he was like four years old. People okay. didn't know he moved to San Francisco. He was raised in San Francisco, and that's yeah. why he played for the for the Dons. So I thought I think that was a pretty good story. I didn't even know that till like maybe like a year ago or something. I'm like, wow. And dope. then there's there's Casey Jones, the old Celtics coach. Mm. He played at USF as well. Mm. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, but it's one of those things. Like, I don't know how good of a player he was. <laughs> I know John uh, Madness from Daly City, and he yeah. and he he frequent that area. He was pretty damn good. I was told. Uh, it's just so it's so many. <laughs> yeah, that's so many. Yeah. We can go on. Yeah. So with with the Bay Love, the Niners hat, living in sack. <laughs> Can you tell our listeners how are you a Philadelphia Sixers fan? Man, it happened. Um, <laughs> it's crazy because even though I went in high school, I, I went to uh, Oakland Tech was because I was forced to for some behavior issues. But I see the here or there, like being from San Francisco, the rivalry is Oakland. Mm-hmm. And so when the Warriors are in Oakland, I can't go for the Warriors. And that was just like a family thing. Like that's just not happening, right? So I've always been a Charles Barkley fan since I was a young kid. And I was a huge Charles Barkley fan when I was young. Uh, my dad was a Julius Irvin, Dr. J fan. Um, so, you know, I, hey, man, just being around family that love Dr. J, I like Barkley, 76ers it was. You know what I mean? And I've always been a Sixer fan, even when we was horrible. Um, you know, you, you trusted years. the process. Man, we got our and our, which changed my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but but man, it was it was a bad, bad for a very very long time, man. And luckily, we're moving in the right direction. Yeah, well, we can get into it. It's Christmas. It's NBA. It's yeah. NBA on Christmas mm-hmm. every year. They pick the games, the marquee games, the superstars. And I remember growing up watching Jordan and watching Isaiah. There was only a couple games, but this year there's five games. You want to you want to go through the yeah. games, talk about the teams. Yeah, we can definitely um, refresh. I know my Sixers play the Bucks. Yeah. Um, who do we got? The Lakers and who are they playing? So we'll start off in the morning. We got okay. the 9 a.m. game. We've got the Celtics playing at the Raptors. Yeah, that's going to be a what, lopsided game. I think the I think the Celtics are going to wear them out. Okay. Yeah, well, I, think, I, think, I think I think I think they're pretty good, man. Like 
even though my Sixers did beat them, mm -hmm. they're actually gelling right now. If you start to notice, Tatum is getter. Um, you know, the coach has always been okay to me, but he's really putting together some pieces, man. They're just missing a big guy right now. Yeah, That's like I look at last year compared to this year and love him or hate him, Kyrie, he's very ball dominant. And mm -hmm. There's not a lot of looks around. So, like, he was averaging in the mid-20s, and everyone else was kind of, like, in the low teens. But Kimba's more efficient, and he's sharing the ball a little bit more. So the ball's in Tatum's hands, who's averaging 20. Kimba's averaging 20, and Jalen Brown's averaging 20. So they've got that good core. But to your point, I'm worried about that big guy in the middle who could rebound, who can score, and maybe even can defend. Yeah, and, it, and it, it's just like free land. Like, they, anybody can go to the lane and lay up. Yeah. I mean, it's no true threat there, and they're missing out Hartford. I mean, that that was a huge loss for them, and the Sixers kind of, you know, they did pretty good by taking them away. Yeah, no, they did. And mm -hmm. uh, the Raptors, you know, coming into this year, you know, the average fan thought that there was going to be just a complete fall off. But, you know, they do have a good core, um, they've got Lowry. He's just back from injury. They've got, you know, Norman Powell, who's playing well, and Siakam. Yeah. He was most improved last Sunday. year. He might be most improved again this year. We just played them Sunday, man. And, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we was kind of shaky towards the end, and we ended up winning. But uh, Lowry looks to me is – they look better without Lowry playing for some reason. I don't know why, but they look better when he's not in the lineup. Um, I thought when he was down, they looked better. They look harder to beat. Um, a lot of guys were stepping up. Maybe that was just me, my my perception of it. But no, like I'm that. a big fan of uh, Van Fleet. Saw him when he oh, took I down like, my Warriors, I like, and I like Van Fleet. Yeah, I think when Lowry's not there, it gives him more opportunities to do his thing, and he doesn't have to look over his shoulder or pass it left or right. You know, he can just take in charge, and mm -hmm. you know, he's nice. Nice. You know, Very and nice. uh, he plays good defense. Plays great defense, and the, the stat that kind of blew me away is the Raptors were seventeen and five last year without Kawhi, mm. um, which I was like, oh, that was a little bit of a surprise. And <laughs> I knew they were going to be, you know, contending this year, but I didn't realize they would be this good this soon. That's the um, That's Siakam, man, and that's Siakam. Siakam, Vlad, Van Bleek too. I mean, he, he's Man, he's shooting his lights out, man. He was killing us the first game we played them, and that's when Embiid scored zero points. Yeah. But he was killing us, man. He was killing us. So Celtics, Raptors, you're going Celtics here. I'm going Celtics. I think they're gelling. It's in Boston, correct? Yeah, no, it's in Toronto. That matters. It's hard to win out there. Yeah. Um, I, I go Boston. I go Boston. We'll see. Okay. All right. Yeah, We're going to yeah. split there. I'm going Raptors. I think they're going to yeah. figure it out. They got the bench. They got the system. They're going to figure that out. So our next game, 1130 a.m. Bucks against your Sixers in Philly. Yeah, I got the Sixers. Um, and the reason why is because, I, to be honest with you, like we're long. We can. We got Al Horford is going to have to guard the 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 Greek. Mm -hmm. Um and they really they don't have anybody who's going to be able to uh touch and beat. They don't have a soul, and they don't have anybody that's going to be able to guard Ben. Mm -hmm. And J and Josh Richardson at the two is going to give Middleton fits. <laughs> He's and, gonna give and, him the business. <laughs> oh my God! I'm telling you, watch out! I'm telling you. So when we're healthy and all of us are playing, um, the only problem is they're deeper than us. Yeah. But I don't know why we don't play Trey Burke more um, off the bench. He's really good. He's a score 21 the other night. Like Is that Trey he, from Michigan? Yeah, Trey Burke okay. from Michigan. I uh, remember he was special in Michigan. He was nice. And he played he with – uh, He had a run. He, had a he run. played with Tim Hardaway Jr. Yeah, he sure did. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's, that's high level. That's high level intelligence right there, man. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I'm going to throw one other person. They played with uh, Nick Stalkis as Stalkis as well. Trash. Sacramento King, trash. He yeah. played with my Sixers too. He was <laughs> trash. But he, but he did help the process. We traded him. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it did help us, um, you know, get some picks and get some guys trade away. That's how we got Jimmy last year, you know. So, uh, he did his time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah, but I, I got the Sixers. 
I got the Sixers too. Um, the Bucks are good. Greek Freak, he's having another monster year. They kept everyone together. You know, they kept Lo- well, actually they kept Lopez. They kept Middleton, but they couldn't sign Brogdon. Um, but I like what they did when they added Korver and they uh, may- held on to West Matthews. They've got those shooters to spread the court. But to your point, they've got to defend on the other end. And I think if you focus in on Greek Freak and make the other people beat them, I think the Sixers just have more weapons. I just I just know the Greek. I mean, who is going to guard Ben? I mean, the Greek can guard Al Harford, but Al's going to get his. He'll get about 15 because he's crafty veteran. He can shoot the little mid-range. But Embiid, he is going to be fired up for this nationally televised game. Yep. And I just he may he may get them for 30. Okay, thirty and ten. Um, I I say MB gave us about twenty eight and eleven, and then I think Ben will give us fifteen nine and nine. Okay, so yeah, what's the right. latest on Ben shooting threes? So he hit his first three pointer, and I read somewhere the coach wants him to shoot one a game. Oh yeah, man. I I think people need to give that up. That's not his game. I think yeah. he's a distributor. He's a he's a paint he's a paint killer like he he puts pressure on the defense in transition. It's just not his game to pull up and shut to shoot the jumper. He's an all star without shooting the ball, so that tells you about his game. Like he doesn't need to shoot jump. I think I think we need to stop focusing on the things don't do well and focus on the things he does very well. He, he does a, a lot of one of the best defenders in basketball right now. People don't even look at him. He's averaging over two steals. Okay, he's, he's taking – well, he's taking uh, uh, eight rebounds down. He's averaging about nine assists. He gets, gives you about 15 points. I mean, Ben Simmons is a special basketball player. If he develops a mid-range jumper, great. If he doesn't, he's – who's going to stop him? Don't nobody stop Ben Simmons but Ben Simmons. <laughs> no, no one stops him. He knows his role. He knows how to impose his will, and I agree with you. It's like he shouldn't do something that he's either not capable of or – He's not that dominant. And that's not his role on the team. His role is not to hit three pointers. His role is just to force <laughs> transition, to impose his will, and to yeah. get in the lane exactly. on, on a mismatch. Man, I, I I tell you, man, it's like I'm I'd be so tired of hearing how he's judged by everyone else and what they do. He's not everyone else. Like he's a special man. He's six ten. He's guard. He's a point guard with a great great ability to get the ball to other guys. If you notice, Ben really does not want to shoot the basketball. No. He only He'd rather distribute. He, he'd rather distribute. And so back in the days, that was fine. Everybody would be like, oh, he's a pure point guard. He's great. He's doing this. Now it's like you got to score 30 like James Harden. That's not his game. He's just not he's not that guy. No, it's the NBA's moved towards a more offensive, you know, less defense. You can't touch the player, no hand checks, no physicality. So everyone wants to soft. see the points. Soft. This is <laughs> soft. NBA is so ginger. I, I, I'm, I'm an old school guy, so it's hard because I just remember the show. Remember when Anthony. Oakley was with the Knicks and Anthony Mason? Oh. You drive through the lane, you'd be missing a couple teeth. <laughs> <laughs> them, them, and um, um, the Detroit Pistons. You know Bad boys. Like, they wasn't playing games. The Blazers with no. Kevin Duckworth and them. Oh, they was. You weren't doing that. The Nets with Derek Coleman in them. I mean, playing. love or hate the Celtics, Mikhail will still throw you an elbow if you come in that oh, lane. Yeah. <laughs> Robert Pears, Mikhail, all them. Robert Pears, all them. Yeah, you know what I mean. Larry Bird, he's mm-hmm. doing. He's he was dirty, man. He was. Yeah. <laughs> and he'd tell you about it too. <laughs> special though, he had special game. Yes. Yeah. All right. So moving on. Two o'clock game. The Rockets taking on my Warriors, who have won. Five games this year, two of them against the Bulls. I don't think they're going to see the Bulls on Christmas or any time else this year. They may be in trouble here on Christmas Day with Mr. Harden coming to town. Don't be surprised if they change the game for Christmas because of the Warriors and how they're looking right now. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Can they do that? Oh, they could if they wanted to. Yeah, they could. They just ha- they haven't announced nothing yet, but I wouldn't be surprised because that game is not going. It is a bad. It is a sad shell of himself. But nobody, trust me, nobody at all in this entire 
the United States of America is having any sympathy for the Golden State Warriors. No, no. And that's my team. And you know what? We, think, we had a good run, that. so it's it's <laughs> fair. It's fair. There should be no I sympathy. Think I, po- I think I posted, where are all the Warrior fans? I think you got on my, my, my tweet. Yeah. And said we're still here. <laughs> it's a red shirt man, year. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, man. I mean, man. you know, it's really it, – it's not even Steph or Clay. I think it's Draymond, man. He just – he talked so much for so long, people mm. couldn't wait to yeah. see him like this. He's looking bad, too. They might they might want to move him, try to get some parts. D. Murph and I were talking about it. Like, it's all about your legacy, right? And Draymond doesn't want to be like, oh, I'm only good because I have Steph and Clay and Durant. Well, here's your time. Here's your opportunity. And his six points, five assists, two for 12 shooting doesn't really look that great now. And the box score does it. Man, he, he's not helping nobody win a game. No. So I, I don't – yeah, he, he he's, he's a shell of himself. Yeah. We can use him. We can use him in Philly. He'd be good off the bench for us. Yeah. Well uh, – so you have what you got? Clay signed. You got Steph signed. D'Lo's got money. Draymond's got money. Like D'Lo's, D'Lo's the shell himself. Too. Yeah. So it'll be Look interesting to see what they do. They got to They got to move him too, man. He is. He is not a fit. <laughs> no, it's gonna. Well, you know, I said it. I said it with D Murph. Like you know, you got Curry and D'Lo. They they they're not stopping anyone. <laughs> you know. <laughs> They gotta outscore them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I, I I go with the Rockets, man. Let me let me go ahead and go with the Rockets. All right. So I'm going upset city. I'm going Warriors <laughs> just because I have to go Warriors. The I Rockets it, man. are coming out flat. They're not excited to play. They're on the okay. road. They're overlooking them. Harden's gonna get into foul trouble early. And the Warriors are upsetting the Rockets on Christmas. Man, I dig Highly it. unlikely, but that's what I'm going for. I dig it, man. All respect. I dig. So we got two more games left. We got the prime time game, 5 p.m. Clippers at the Lakers. What are your mm-hmm. thoughts on the two LA teams? Man, the Lakers look really good, man. The Lakers look like they're starting to to go where everybody thought they were going to go. But man, prime time. My money's on Kawhi Leonard. I think Kawhi Leonard is the best basketball player, and and he's the best basketball player in the NBA right now. Um, I like, I, I love LeBron. I'm, I'm a LeBron fan, so whatever, whatever he does, any championship he wins, like I really want him to win. I, I, I like LeBron James a lot, but I just think Kawhi Leonard right now is at the top of his game, and he could defend LeBron. LeBron can't defend him. That's <laughs> so yeah, I, yeah. So I, I'll take the Clippers with Paul George. You know he he's there. They haven't they haven't seen that dynamic. So I'm ready yeah, for I just think uh, I think the Clippers are a better all around team. Like they have their identity, they have their people, and two of their best players don't even start. They got Lou Williams coming off the bench and Montreal Harrell as well. Mm-hmm. And so Kawhi and Paul don't have to dominate. Whereas the Lakers, LeBron and AD have to dominate every night, and they can dominate on every night, but. Mm-hmm. I just don't see them having enough outside shooting on the Lakers consistently or enough defense to beat the Clippers in this game um, or to be ranked higher than the Clippers. Mm -hmm. So I'm going Clippers as well. I know the Lakers have a great record, but I think it's a little bit of fool's gold. You know, they lost to the Mavericks. They lost to the Rappers. They lost to the Clippers. They haven't played the Celtics. Fool's gold. They have they haven't played the Celtics, Sixers, or Rockets yet. They're beating up on the Warriors, the Pelicans. Like, don't get me wrong, the Lakers the are Buc- good. The Bucks smashed the Clippers, by the way. There was smashed. there was no Kawhi or Paul George then in that game. They didn't play in that game. I swore uh one uh, of them didn't play. Yeah. So I know Kawhi had 17 points. So okay. maybe Paul didn't play. Maybe Paul didn't play. So. Okay, man. I, oh, hey, man. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. I, LeBron James. I don't know, bro. <laughs> Despite all that, I'm still saying they're the second best team in the West. I'm just saying if I have to stack rank the teams right now, I'm going 
Bucks one. This is long term stack ranking. Bucks one, Clippers two, Sixers three, Lakers four, and then I'll go Celtics five. So you think the Bucks are better than the, than the Sixers? As a yes. Okay. I do. But any, here's where I'll uh, ride the fence a little bit. Anything can happen in a seven game series, right? Yeah, and that's where I think it comes down to culture because I'm, I'm going to be on the record and say we will not win a championship with Brett Brown as our head coach. So I, I want you to remember I said this. <laughs> it does not matter what we do. If Brett Brown is our head coach, he will find a way to make us lose the basketball game. He is an absolute – he he helped with, the, with the, the process. Now we need to bring in a coach to finish the process. He is terrible. Now okay. is, it, is it the X's and O's? What do you think the I, I issue think is? Of, I think it's for one, he, he doesn't hold our players accountable. MB is not held accountable. Ben Simmons is not held accountable. These guys are not held. We are, we've been in the top three of turnovers ever since he's been the head coach. This is back when we were terrible, when we was winning seven games. Like oh, wow. We've been in the top three, and we are still in the top three with all of these great players. So who is yeah. that? That is you. As a head coach, you're not holding these people accountable. I'll be sitting these cat on the bench. No, you get on the bench. Look, look, I'm not. Look, you you over here turning the rock over. You got Ben had seven turnovers. MB was in the game. This is a prime example. MB was in the game with zero points against the Raptors at the end of the game, shooting the ball, just forcing it up, and did not take him out. No accountability. You have no accountability, man. I told you know. Bro, get on the bench. You're you're sucking it up right now. Yeah. Put Al Horford at center. Bring one of these young cats off the bench. Like my boy Marquise, uh, uh, my rookie from Washington. Yeah. Oh, defensive stopper. Thibel. He had dub, he had Dibble. He had Dub last night. Yeah. He's nice. So he, he can play, man. He change the lineup. Good coaches <laughs> will change the lineup. If if I don't care if you're the superstar, you have to sit down. To understand and not helping us doing that, man. Yeah, it's all about matchups and the flow of the game, and you've got to be able to adapt and sit some players if they're not playing well, and play those players if they're in a groove or if they're in a rhythm. I agree. I agree, man. But I could talk about my sixes all day. <laughs> all right, last game nightcap, seven thirty p.m. Pelicans at Nuggets. A little bit of a disappointment. I think the NBA thought, whoo. They thought, they thought the thought big boy was going to be playing. Yeah, when is not. he going to be back? So I heard last week on the jump, he's not even on the court yet. So if he's not on the court, he's got to still go through some stuff. He might not be back till January. So I'm not sure when Zion's going to be back. They may not even play him this year, man. They might. Yeah, they might shut him down, they try to get play. another draft pick. Um, So I got Denver. I don't think it's going to be much of a matchup. But what's no. going on with Joe Kick this year? His points are down a little bit. His sister oh, are down. I always thought, and, and you're going to look at me crazy when I said, but I've always felt like Joker was kind of overrated, man. Okay. He was not really he, – he he was a surprise last year to people, but people kind of own his game now. He, he's kind of overrated. He doesn't have a go-to move. He's not explosive. Um, <laughs> he's not explosive. He's kind of too heavy for me. Um. I don't know. You know, his shooting is down. He he's more of a jump shooting center than he is yeah. a inside man. So he's going to struggle getting some baskets. Yeah, he uh, he's playing okay, but I think the bar was set so high last year, and the NBA is all about scouting reports and getting better. And I don't know if he got better from last year to this year. To your point. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if he got any better, and his defense has always been terrible. So, yeah. you know. But he can rebound. He can. He, he can. I'll give him that, man. He can rebound the ball. He, he's all right. So that's going to blow them out, though. <laughs> so that's Christmas. Uh, mm -hmm. We got Celtics, Raptors, Bucks, Sixers, Rockets, Warriors, Clippers, Lakers, Finale, Pelicans, Nuggets. So before I let you go, can we do a little rapid fire? Five questions. You just answer based oh, yeah. on what's on your mind. Let's do it. All right, it's going to cover fashion, music, and geography. 
There's no wrong answer. Chuck Taylors or Jays? Chuck Taylors. Dre or Snoop? Dre. White men can't jump or above the rim? Uh, ooh. Um, I go white men can't jump. All right. Eight seed in the Western Conference, the Kings or the Suns? Uh, I, I go with the Kings. All right. Last <laughs> question. West Coast or East Coast? Easy. It's West Side. West Side to Best Side. Well, <laughs> thank you for coming on to the show. Why don't you tell the listeners where they can find you, how they can subscribe, download, and check out Raw and Uncut. Well, I, I, this so I'm on Raw and Uncut anything. So YouTube, Raw and Uncut, even though I do Raw TV on, on YouTube, um, Raw and Uncut on any podcast platform, even iHeartRadio and, and, and TuneIn Radio. Um, you can find me on any of those platforms. I'm actually in the middle of writing a book that will be done in January. I'm very proud of this book. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm elated that I'm going to finally get this thing done, man. I've been trying to write this thing for two years, but it should be done. Um, it's called it's 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 called uh, How to Handle Things Like a Man. So uh, y'all watch out for that. All right. Well, fans, make sure you get that, How to Handle oh, Things Like a Man. And you got to come on the show and talk, tell us a little bit about the book before you go oh, on the yeah. book tour. Oh, man. And I got a little small one set up. I was pretty impressed, man. You know, I, you know we, we'll get it going. We definitely set it up. Um, I definitely want to talk to you. You got to have you on my podcast too, man. We got to rock and roll. You, you, you and your co-host, man, together though, man. Yeah, 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 definitely. He was going to join, funny, and then he had to switch his flight for work, so he apologizes. But we'll get on your show sometime oh, yeah. in the new year. Oh, you got to do it. You do the YouTube. I got Raw TV going. It's, it's it's pretty good right now. It's going pretty good, man. All right, folks. Well, that wraps it up. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy, Happy New Year. Holiday. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, brother. All right. We'll be good. All right, man. All right. Take care. Peace.